We're about to see $1.4 billion worth of aircraft destroyed by a little bit of water. It was February 23, 2008 at 10.30 a.m. local time in Guam. Witnesses saw the flying wing pitch up violently and then struggle through the air, its control surfaces flailing wildly as it slowly sank back to earth. The aircraft began drifting to the left, and in moments, its left wing began to drag across the ground. Only then did the crew of two eject. Pilotless, the doomed aircraft fell to the ground, shattered, and exploded in a huge fireball. The scorched area would cover 90,000 square feet, the debris field 40,000. The B-2 Spirit Bomber had come to Guam as part of the Missouri-based 509th Bomb Wing. The spectacular accident marked the very first loss of a B-2 Spirit Bomber in roughly 75,000 hours of flying. The first B-2 was publicly displayed on November 22, 1988. It's a multi-role bomber capable of delivering both conventional and nuclear munitions. A dramatic leap forward in technology, its capability to penetrate air defenses and threaten effective retaliation provide what the United States Air Force calls a strong effective deterrent. The revolutionary blending of low observable technologies with high aerodynamic efficiency and large payload gives the B-2 important advantages over existing bombers. The aircraft's typical takeoff weight is 336,500 pounds, can carry a payload of 40,000 pounds of weapons and has an unrefueled range of approximately 6,000 nautical miles. In a review of the accident, the Air Force found that moisture in three port transducer units distorted data introduced by the B-2 Spirit's air data system. That means the aircraft's own systems were feeding themselves with false data and passing that inaccurate information along to the aircraft's pilots. Major Ryan Link and Captain Justin Grieve were warned by Master Caution Light and Flight Control Systems Caution 19 seconds after brake release while on takeoff roll. They observed air data faults, but those faults resolved themselves within 6 seconds and the caution was rescinded at approximately 120 knots indicated. But the airspeed numbers were wrong. When the pilots thought they had 158 knots, they actually had 124. With false airspeed readings and a faulty system that was exaggerating their control inputs, the pilots never stood a chance. The left wing impacted the ground just as the crew ejected. In the end, the Air Force's report on the incident suggests that the entire accident could have been avoided. Prior to the flight, the aircraft's own systems had prompted the crew to perform an air data calibration. Certain maintenance crews knew that moisture in the system could cause errors during that process, and they knew that application of pitot heat or heat to the static and ram air data system prior to calibration could result solve the issue but that technique had not been relayed to this bomber crew and you've just witnessed the result